Hi everyone, I'm Neeraj Sriram and I'm a current anesthesia intern. As you know, Dr. Balfans and I are doing a QI project to assess the knowledge and comfort level of using phenylephrine and norepinephrine intraoperatively. First, I'd like to thank those of you that completed my pre-survey. As a lot of you know, many of the UNC Enhanced Recovery Pathways indicate using norepinephrine as the first-line presser, but many of you feel more comfortable using phenylephrine. During the next couple of minutes, I'm going to briefly talk about both phenylephrine and norepinephrine. Hypotension is commonly encountered during anesthesia and may be mild and self-limiting. The goal of vasopressors is to increase systemic vascular resistance to correct this hypotension. SVR is the measurement of resistance of the systemic vascular bed to blood flow. It is calculated by multiplying 80 times the difference between the mean arterial pressure and the central venous pressure. Then that is divided by the cardiac output. There is also a systemic vascular resistance index. SVRI is the SVR per body mass and the denominator of the equation is the cardiac output divided by body surface area or cardiac index. Many sources mention infusing pressors at rates of micrograms per kilogram per minute. But does an obese patient need more pressor than a non-obese patient? For this reason, it makes more clinical sense to mention infusion rates in micrograms per minute. I will also have the rate in micrograms per kilogram per minute for comparison and your knowledge. Phenylephrine is a non-catecholamine direct-acting alpha-adrenergic agonist. The primary effect of phenylephrine is peripheral vasoconstriction, increasing systemic vascular resistance and blood pressure. However, due to the increase in blood pressure, reflex bradycardia and a decrease in cardiac output may be observed. Phenylephrine has a short onset of action and duration of approximately 5 to 10 minutes. It can be administered as either a bolus or infusion. Bolus doses of phenylephrine are typically 80 to 160 micrograms, while infusions can be set at a rate of 10 to 100 micrograms per minute. Phenylephrine is metabolized in the liver and intestinal wall, and it is cleared by the kidneys. Norepinephrine is an endogenous neurotransmitter and precursor to epinephrine. It is a potent alpha-adrenergic agonist and modest beta-1 agonist. It also has very minimal beta-2 activity, but for the most part is an alpha and beta-1 agonist. Norepinephrine is a powerful vasoconstrictor, and like phenylephrine, increases systemic vascular resistance and blood pressure. It has been reported that norepinephrine is approximately 10 times more potent than phenylephrine. The reflex bradycardia caused by the increase in blood pressure is mitigated by the beta-1 stimulation of norepinephrine. Therefore, the heart rate and cardiac output are generally unchanged. Norepinephrine has a really short duration of action. Therefore, it is typically used as an infusion. Bolus doses of norepinephrine are typically 16 to 32 micrograms, and infusions can be set at a rate of 1 to 10 micrograms per minute. Norepinephrine is metabolized by monoamine oxidase and COMT, and the metabolites are excreted in the urine. Many people are uncomfortable with using norepinephrine via peripheral IVs due to the concern of extravasation and tissue necrosis, and they believe phenylephrine is safer since it is less potent. Yes, norepinephrine is approximately 10 times more potent than phenylephrine, but phenylephrine is often infused at approximately 10 times the rate of a norepinephrine infusion. Norepinephrine often gets a bad rap, but phenylephrine at high doses and high rates of infusion can also cause extravasation tissue injury. Two studies to highlight my point are a randomized control trial by Ricard et al. and a systematic review by Lubani et al. In the trial by Ricard, they studied catheter-related insertion and maintenance complications in ICU patients. It was found that there were less complications with central venous catheters than with peripheral IVs, but the major complication with peripheral IVs was difficulty placing the IV, requiring numerous attempts. In this trial, some patients had norepinephrine running at very high doses, up to 33.3 micrograms per minute. 19 patients in the peripheral IV group had extravasation compared to two in the central line group, but none of those 19 required anything more than observation and conservative treatment. In the systematic review by Lubani et al., they studied all published reports of local tissue injury or extravasation from vasopressor administration via either peripheral IVs 
or central venous catheters. The study included 85 articles with 270 patients and 325 separate local tissue injury and extravasation events. It was found that most complications of extravasation and tissue injury occurred if the presser was administered via a peripheral IV distal to the anticubital or popliteal fossa and infused for greater than four hours. That being said, norepinephrine via a peripheral IV is most likely safe, at least for infusions less than four hours. Also, if you consider the difference in dosing combined with the difference in potency, the risk should be no greater than with phenylephrine. So in summary, phenylephrine is an alpha agonist and can be administered as a bolus or infusion. Norepinephrine is an alpha and beta-1 agonist and is typically administered as an infusion. It may make more clinical sense to dose vasopressors based on SVR rather than SVRI. Norepinephrine is likely safe to infuse through a peripheral IV despite its increased potency compared to phenylephrine. And finally, many of the UNC enhanced recovery pathways indicate using norepinephrine as your first line presser for intraoperative hypotension. Thank you for taking your time to listen to this educational module about norepinephrine and phenylephrine. Please complete my post survey. You can find the link to the survey in the email I sent with the link to this video. Thank you.